Now here's a fun little game that is sure to pique your interest. Line War is a new RTS by Studio Centurion, and offers a new and honestly quite revolutionary concept. Whereas almost every other RTS out there has you micromanage your units in an honestly quite archaic way, and yes I'm looking at you Age of Empires, Line War uses a remarkably fun system of, you guessed it, lines. And it works like this. Instead of clicking and dragging each individual unit and then pointing them in one direction, a simple line drag lets you tell your units where to go, and not just once, but forever. Ok, I know that might sound a bit weird, so let's start at the beginning. Line War is a real-time strategy game, and it's all about learning how to balance resource management with sound military tactics. Now this doesn't sound all too new, but bear with me. Line War isn't really as much about immersion as it is about warfare. This means that the environments are there to show you opportunities on a grand scale rather than on a hyper-detailed map. The maps are randomly generated every time, consisting of a mix of land masses and oceans, with more or less islands depending on the seed. As of this review, Line War is a player versus player game only, and before every match, both players get to view the generated map from up top, and decide whether the map layout looks good. If both agree to play, it's a race to choose the best starting location, but if both players choose the same place, a message pops up saying that you're too close to each other. So then, how do you choose where to begin? Well, Line War offers two sets of currencies. The first one is energy. Energy is marked on the map layout by factory signs and are essentially fossil fuels. In game, you can build refineries on top of these, which then produce energy. Energy is required for the functioning of tanks, ships, and aircraft, so it is indeed a vital resource. Perhaps even more vital is capital, which is essentially called hard cash. Capital is produced in cities and factories, and you will again have to build these on top of the appropriate tiles to produce this resource. And how do we get to these resources in the first place? Well, this is where the line warfare comes in. Both players begin with a handful of unit groups, and the best possible thing to do is to move these to various hotspots immediately after start. This is done by simply clicking and dragging a line from point A to point B, and the units close to the line will follow it to its destination. Now, as you can see, the entire world is divided into zones, and by default, your units will attempt to gain control of these zones as they move. You need to control the zones where a resource is located to actually make use of it, so getting control of as many zones as possible is vital. The funny thing about Line War though, and an aspect most players will have a hard time with in the first few matches, is that this is essentially a game of blobbing and spamming. Now that might sound uninteresting, but it's more complicated than that. You see, while resources are vital to fuel your army, you actually need an army to get anywhere. That's why it's so important to build barracks and artillery factories right away, because if you don't, the enemy will and you don't want to be the guy without a big gun when the shooting starts. The thing I love about Line War is how intense everything gets once you meet the enemy. All of a sudden, a mostly quiet, wide open world is compressed into one front, and then a few more if lines are drawn and trenches dug. And that's another thing in this game, you can actually dig and prepare your defenses. This will lead to some World War 1 style scenes where the two sides will draw lines, and it's generally up to the superior force to take the charge and attack. Of course. A simple charge head-on without an edge is generally to be avoided, and this is where the various weaponry of Line War comes into play. Line War offers you soldiers, paratroopers, artillery, and the tanks especially are very useful if you wish to punch through a line of infantry and their defenses. But what's equally important is air superiority, as dominating the skies will lend your ground troops massive support. Even here we have a large variety of units, from helicopters to fighters and bombers, all with different specialities. I tend to prefer a mix of air-to-air -air fighters and air-to-ground bombers, as that gives me an opportunity to dominate the skies while my bombers can take care of the entrenched units below. This will definitely soften up a defending enemy army before an assault. Each type of aircraft has a different radius they can fly away from the airport, which is important to be aware of when placing said airport. This range can be extended by building individual landing pads around the map though, which gives a tactical advantage. What's even better, and even more awesome than a pack of bombers though, is the nuke which will destroy anything in its path and damage what it does in total within a certain blast radius. This goes for units and buildings, and a well-placed nuclear strike can mean the difference between victory and defeat. The nuke costs a heck of a lot to build though, and takes long to finalize, but once again, you always want to be the first guy or gal with one.
Nukes are rather easy targets and can be destroyed easily by enemy weapons. But this is where another tactical aspect of line war comes in. Placing buildings and units in forests gives them a hidden modifier, which is extremely difficult for the enemy to spot unless they're very near. This means that placing nuclear facilities or other valuable factories in these spots can be crucial in the long run. But there's also the matter of the sea, and building ports will let you transport your units from one landmass to another. Dominating the seas can be crucial on the right maps, as they're both places where resources are found and are the key to reaching new areas first. Here as well we have various ships to choose from. I tend to choose the destroyers for my naval combat, and even though I think the designs of the ships are cute, this is perhaps the only area where I would have liked my massive ships of war to look a bit more imposing. When I first began playing Lion War, I thought it looked overly complicated, but after just one playthrough, I had learned basically everything I needed to up my game. Part of this is thanks to the players I met, which were always helpful and nice to talk to. I returned the favor, and when I later met my opponents, who were more or less completely fresh, I taught them a thing or two as well, and let them take their time for a while. That's partially why I think this one versus one system works so well, because it really gives the players the opportunity to get cozy. Because Line War is so low stakes, in the sense that these games are generally over in around 20 to 60 minutes, depending on the players, I've never felt like losing a match was the end of the world, or that it was wasted time. Part of the fun is the act of moving your troops around itself, making those trenches, setting up an invasion, and making good use of your resources. Despite looking very simple, the unit models are very comfortable to look at, and I really find that the simple visual style goes well with how easy this game is to pick up and play. It's just an inviting game overall, and when factoring in the cool explosion effects and how well everything runs, it just makes everything that much better. Line War kinda came out of nowhere for me, but somehow, this tiny game has managed to become the strategy game this year which I've become the most addicted to. Jumping into games is easy, and the knowledge that playing a strategy game in multiplayer is as easy as clicking a button is part of this. It's kinda like playing Rocket League, but with actual rockets flying around. I really think the Line Warfare concept is genius, and it feels like a microscopic version of the system in Hearts of Iron 4, if you know what I mean. I'm not saying that other RTS games need to copy Line Wars mechanic, but I am saying that this revolutionary feature cuts heavily down on the tedious and archaic micromanaging of individual units which I personally am really sick of by now. If you've been looking for a fun strategy game that is fairly easy to learn, and even easier to jump back into and just play for fun, then Line War is definitely your best bet right now, and I highly recommend checking it out. The game is currently out in early access, and will gain even more features in the future, which I personally hope will provide a few more interesting weapons and technology, and I can't wait for the implementation of team-based combat as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really come to love Lion War, and I really think it can become something of a cult classic if the devs keep up the great work. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, and consider supporting the channel further, either by becoming a Patreon or a channel member. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.